Before starting into the details, let me give an overview of what we actually measure when we perform a receiver test and what are the different steps of this receiver test task. Its purpose is to find out if the receiver is able to properly detect the correct digital content within a worst case analog signal input. Receiver testing involves three steps. The first step, typically a pattern generator is used to generate this worst case signal as I was describing before. And since there are tolerances in the test setup, and also in the accuracy of the generator, it is required that the stimulus is calibrated so that it contains the correct level of different impairments that are typically defined in the appropriate standard. Bottom line, this makes sure the receiver is not overstressed when performing the actual test. In the second step, the device nerd test is set into an appropriate test mode, either in band or with the pattern generator, or by a custom interface. Uh, can be a sideband interface that is provided uh, by the implementation. Then stimulate the receiver with the stressed signal that was calibrated before using the specified test setup. This may include necessary auxiliary signals, such as reference clock. And then the third step of the task is to verify if the receiver has properly detected a sufficient number of bits to verify if this actual bit error rate is less than the target bit error rate. There are several ways to measure bit error rate. The method most often used is that the device node test loops back the complete bit stream it received, and the tester verifies this, the bits that have been looped back, whether they match with the bits it actually had sent originally. As I said, there are several methods. Another method is that the device number test implements bit counters as well as error counters in its receiver. Here, the test application just reads the counter values after an appropriate num uh, amount of time, either in band using a pattern generator or a sideband interface. So the DDR5 approach is to test the receiver using the loopback method. As stated before, margins are getting smaller with increasing the speed. As a consequence, the DDR5 will require devices to support re receiver testing by providing appropriate loopback capabilities. The schematic here shows a block diagram of a DDR5 device test board. This includes a set of replica channels that provide the exact same characteristics as the breakout channels below. The purpose of the replica channel is to provide access to the calibration point for an oscilloscope. It is not 100% clear yet whether where the, this calibration point is. Typically, it has been at the ball for earlier specifications. And we assume it's going to be this, uh, the case for DDR5 also. But if it turns out the calibration point is somewhere else, somewhere else for example, within the device, our approach would be to use the InfiniSim software with an appropriate package model to actually virtually measure at any point in the system or even within the device. After the calibration process, the pattern generator is connected to the TP6 uh, SMA connectors in this example on the slide, and the analyzer part is connected to the appropriate loopback, and test process can start. So you may note in this uh, that this uh, very schematic is, is actually generic one and does not reflect the fact that in DDR5, the, the clock is differential, while the data signal is single-ended. 